ALIs is an AI-powered qualitative analysis platform. They let you take a mixture of different types of data. So it could be interview transcripts, it could be interview audio. And recently they have added the ability to add spreadsheets or CSVs. So if you have qualitative data sitting in a spreadsheet format, say out of Qualtrics, and you can get it to search for themes. For interviews, you can also get it to do much more in-depth academic style qualitative analysis. I reviewed an earlier version of this platform last year and I was really impressed. Today I'm going to give you a brief tour. We'll start off on the homepage. We'll run through a couple of examples to see what it looks like and give you a feel for the platform. If you do see value in it and you end up going with the paid version, I have a code, so code LINDEN, all in caps, L-Y-N-D-O-N, will give you 30% off a paid plan. But even just if you want to have a bit of an experiment, they give you some pretty good functionality just for free. Here we are on the homepage. It's a good starting point to just have a bit of a scroll, see what this platform is all about. And we can see that they've got a few animations as we scroll down. We'll see some case studies as well. It is pretty much as simple as they're showing here. So uploading files of whatever type you have your data in, then selecting the type of analysis, and then it can spit out a variety of different reports, code books, and things like that, depending on what you're after. If we scroll down, they've got some animations showing the different features. And then the thing that I quite like once we get through all of these different features is they do have a list of use cases and examples. So this is really nice for you to get a feel for the kinds of things you can do. And we can see we've got different tabs here. So we've got academia, evaluation, market and product research and UX and product design. They've built it with quite a few different use cases. If you are in academia, you can see we've got a few things in here like grounded theory and discourse analysis. This is much more of a proper qualitative analysis, whereas something like ChatGPT will just try and summarize for you. This really takes another step towards that more technical style of analysis. Jumping across the tabs, we can see we've got a number of different things here for evaluation, market research, and UX design as well. They give us a bit of a contrast to some of the other qualitative platforms. The one that probably most of you are most familiar with would be in Vivo, and it's more of a manual coding tool. It might be something that gets a bit of AI added. In fact, I have seen some announcements saying there will be a bit of AI getting added to it, but certainly nowhere near as automated as what this platform is. There are only two plans, there's the free plan and the pro plan. Free plan definitely is good for getting you started, getting a feel for whether things work for you. A few limitations in here, you only get the one theme and one question. So that's a little bit limited for doing real analysis. And there's some limitations on the size of the files. Pretty much everything on the pro plan is unlimited. In addition, there is the functionality where it can actually do surveying and interviewing for you. They've got an AI avatar and it will do interviewing for you. And we can see down here, that's an extra charge. So it's a bit of an add on. And for someone that wanted to do a bulk amount of interviewing, you would lose that benefit of human to human interviewing, but you would be able to scale up and do a whole lot. Their AI avatars have come a long way. So if you have looked at ALIs before, they've made some really big steps and we'll have a bit of a demo of that a little bit later. And now a year on from when we, now a year on from last time we looked, they also have a whole lot of examples of different organizations that have been using the platform. Before we get in and have a look at the platform, one last thing that I want to cover is their data security. And this was something that I highlighted last time around and was particularly impressed with. They've really had a good think about this being a secure platform. You're going to be putting interview data here, which is potentially sensitive, potentially identifiable. We can see that they've got encryption in transit, encryption at rest. They've really thought about what is important with keeping your data safe. They don't train anything of their platform using your data. They've got this logical segregation here. So your data is there for you to use. It's separate from everything else. They're not trying to mash it together. They're not trying to train models. And so I think that's very reassuring. They're nice and clear with their data retention as well. So we can see here on demand deletion and purging. And they also have servers in the US and Europe. So US data, US customers will be on a US server. In the EU, you'll be on an EU server. 
It might be worth, if you're somewhere else, and I haven't done this yet, but I might actually ask them, if you are somewhere else like Australia, New Zealand, asking whether they have or will in the future have servers there as well. Certainly the EU gives you very good protections, but it may be that you have requirements where your data needs to be on a server within your country. Probably worth something following up. I found that the developer is very responsive to questions like that. And at the bottom here, we can see all of the different compliance standards it's ticking off. So SOC 2, GDPR, HIPAA, and so on. So I've already logged in. And from here, we've just got a couple of drop downs so we can look at our files, our recent projects. And then in the center here, we can launch the pro version. We've got the options to give it the different types of data. We can chat with data. So we can give it an interview transcript. And rather than just letting it go for it with identifying themes or analysis, we can interact and chat with it instead. And we can create a survey. We have a nice simple interface. So we can drag and drop our files into here and then it will group them. So if we have a particular project, we'll put in our files, it will put them together into a project. Next time around, if we've got a new project, it'll create a new project for that new lot. So everything is nice and neatly grouped. We can either browse, we can drag and drop, and we've also got access to the common cloud platforms. And from there, we can come down and whichever type of data we've got, we can choose analyze and we can get into some analysis. Here I've got three interviews. They are the interview transcripts. They're in doc format. They are synthetic data. So not using real data here in a video, of course. We select these. These are ones I already had sitting on the platform, but we can just upload new if we wanted to. And then once we've selected them, we can choose what type of analysis. We can get a summary, we can get themes, codebook, frequency analysis. We can enter questions and we can get answers to questions. And then if we've got particular segments, so if this were a bigger study and maybe we wanted to compare across demographics or other things within our data, we could choose that as well. We've then got a drop down of optional instructions. We can choose if we would like a word cloud or not. For the detection of themes, we can just get it to identify things itself as AI, or we can provide our own themes or code book. So if we are looking for particular themes, we've thought about some theory and we have a project like that, then we can choose our own here. I've just said, get some AI themes. And so it will run through, it'll find themes and sub themes. And we can see it's given us a few. We can then give more instruction we can see off on the right hand side here as well. We can add and subtract. All of these are also editable. So if it found a theme, but we wanted to change the wording of it, we could do that as well. So I'm just going to come down and hit next. There's a whole lot of adjusting we could do if we wanted, but really just giving you a bit of a flavor here. That was the themes and copy. You can see it works very quickly as well. And next one, get answers. So we can whack some questions into here and then it will try and answer those from the transcripts or whatever data we've given it. And then in our last step for the executive summary, this is where it is probably the most impressive component where we can see we're going to get the executive summary. We can nominate what kind of domain we're in. And then we've got all of these options on the type of analysis that it is going to do. And then we can create the project and start the analysis. It'll run for a little while to produce the report for us. It does send a notification email, which is quite handy if you want to go away, work on some other stuff and just get a ping when it is done. Having said that, we're talking a few minutes, maybe if you had a very, very big set of data, then maybe it might be five or 10 minutes. I don't think I've had anything run longer than that. We'll leave that ticking over. We'll have a look at a couple more things in the meantime. So if we go analyze CSV or Excel files, then similar kind of wizard where we'll drop in a file. This is going to be really handy if you are working with survey data and you've got some free text questions. You want to be able to try and get some analysis of those. Here I've got some survey data. It's got a couple of demographic questions and it's got a couple of free questions. We can see that we can analyze all of the columns. We can analyze just the text, analyze interview data in a spreadsheet format. It doesn't go into as much depth when it's working with survey data. So we can't get it to do those things like the grounded theory, but that's not appropriate for this kind of data anyway. 
generally with this kind of data, what we are looking for is just themes and patterns. In this drop down where we've got the optional instructions, we can see that it's given a very simple prompt, identify two to three themes and then the sub themes. We can edit and change that. So we can make that much more detailed if there's particular things we want. Quite quickly, it went through, it found themes, separated it by the two different questions we had. So we had a what was done well and a what could be improved question. And it's given us a whole heap, learning and presentation quality. We can go through, we can use the minus, we can take some of these out. I've left these in just to really show you that it can go to quite a high degree of detail, which is really handy sometimes because trying to get the similar kind of analysis out of something like ChatGPT, often what will happen is you will just get a very surface level summarization with a couple of bullet points, whereas this is pretty well detailed. We've then got the same for the second question and then we can go create project and start analysis and we can see here that it's created the project i actually ran this one three days ago and it's going to give us a word document it's going to give us an analysis in the time that we were working with the survey excel file the first one that we did is all done and so we can see we get this page here with a whole lot of pop outs We've also got some actions up here so we can download the bits and pieces we can chat with the analysis so the chat function will let us chat with an interview transcript but it'll also let us chat with the analysis got an executive summary here and we can see nice and clearly lays out the different bits and pieces for us it has a fair bit so that top bit is all about all of the interviews collectively but then it's also got some summaries of each interview one by one. We've got a code book. We can see the various different codes and then it'll give the pieces that it has used from the different interview documents in order to identify that particular code. It'll produce a word cloud. If you have ticked that word cloud box that we saw earlier and then we can do some adjustments here. You can see we've got different categories for the words up here. As you'd expect, AI is a big one. So really nice to have an interactive word cloud and then also something we can pull out for presentations and things like that. One last thing we'll have a look at is the demo of the AI interviewer. It's one of the things that has been updated since the last time I reviewed this platform. So previously it was chat based, whereas now we'll see that we actually have this avatar. It's going to ask questions. There's still a little bit of a lag processing what you say into the next question, but it's gotten much, much faster. AI interviewer developed by AI Live. This demo is about your hobby. I'm still learning, so please be patient. If I interrupt you by mistake, let me know and ask me to go back to the previous question. Let's start. What hobbies do you enjoy in your free time? Guitar. I see. How did you first get interested in playing guitar? I always liked music. Thank you for sharing. How often do you spend time playing guitar? So we can see it'll have a back and forth. The response that it gives are a wee bit generic, but it's certainly something where you can see the potential. You can see where it's heading. And I thought that was a pretty cool one just to share as a last thing. So this has been ALIs. I think it gives a lot of value to anyone who is working with interview data or even just free text out of surveys. I think it does more than what something like ChatGPT will do. And the free version gives you just enough of a taste to know whether it's going to add value to your work or not. Remember, you can use the code LINDEN, all caps, to get 30% off. And if you want to see my previous review of the earlier version of the platform, then I will link it up just here.